Hey, welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here. Today, we're going over the Earth Selections quests, which are coming out in the next, like, let's say two weeks. No later than a month, guaranteed. Guaranteed. But these units obviously are MR units and below, so they're not ones that typically get a ton of use. So you always want to start early getting them up to speed. So when the content drops, you're ready to go. You can bang it out that week and not have to worry about it in the future. So this is a, a video to go over some of these units, some of their strengths, what to expect from the selection quests overall. So jumping into it, it's similar to the light quest, almost exactly the same. It unlocks your Miraga, a uh, brand new UR unit, and it gives you all his uh, shards and mind spheres and all the whatever to get him to X when you complete all the stages. So the intent of this video is essentially how do you beat 8, 9, and 10 and the comp that's going to best serve you. So there are YouTube videos out there from uh, Japan that have already shown people clearing it. I know Cabbage has a few if you want to check them out just to get like a first-hand view of what some of the content looks like. But um, other than that, this video, again, intended for level 10 clears. So this is meant for, you know, trying to min-max just a little bit. The, it's a highlight of the enemies in the stages just to kind of get an overview of what to expect. An, an Earth cast overview of everyone you can select from. Then a quick unit analysis one by one. And then good vision cards to essentially get ready overall. So the enemy attributes uh, in level 8, 9, and 10. So level 8, uh, really high level. You can see most of it, there is some decent um, resist across, so it's pretty spread out evenly. There isn't one type that's particularly strong and particularly weak. One thing to note overall though, there are a fair amount of missile resists, uh, just in general, and we're going to notice that in the other ones as well, but uh, definitely some opportunities for some uh, slash weakness and some, some magic weakness potentially. So I know right off the bat, and this is no surprise, you're probably going to want to focus on slash and magic, and then really slot in the uh, strike and pierce where you can potentially, but I would really stay away from any missile units on this one. Sorry, Mustadio. Uh, for the level 9, really kind of the same concept. There is some decent slash resistance, but obviously we have ways to get through with penetration and whatnot. Some characters have in their kit. There are some weaknesses to uh, to pierce. There are some in the magic. And then, again, missiles, like, kind of meh. I'd stay away from it. This is really just high level to show you what to expect. And then, again, level 10. Resist overall, it's kind of a blend. There really is no one that's like, you need a ton of slash, you need a ton of magic. All you need to know is you basically do need like one of each potentially because there is some variety in terms of what the resists are overall. So uh, that's kind of in a nutshell. That'll kind of shape how I've decided to, to pick my units. So this is the earth cast that you have the ability to pick from. It's It's got some versatility in terms of jobs, but nothing too, too crazy in terms of overall utility. We'll get to that. So Mont is to me the only legitimate tank Balo technically can because he does have some aggro and he's got some defense and he's super evade so he might be able to live a little while longer but just off the top of my head like I'm remembering the level 10 for the light cast and I don't think Balo can main tank on level 10 so I'm going like Mont here only legitimate tank. Out of this cast too Liviel is really the only healer as well. Remember it does have Cura so there is some extra healing if you really need it in a pinch but she really is the only like overall healer i know etra technically has an hp restore too but there's some funky things there with faith and whatnot whether you wanted to get it up there and uh, long story short the livia really is like pure healer so that's one thing to keep in mind also has access to a ton of magic we'll get to that soon there are five potential ex units out of this cast so to me right off the bat i do think the power creep is going to be a little bit harsher in this than the light light was way more uh, utility based and time mage and stuff like that this is definitely more of a dps heavy damage output brawly defensive cast of characters and because so many of them have ex upgrades i would imagine that the content actually will be harder to match the better stats of this cast overall uh not much utility like I'm, i was just mentioning you know in terms of jobs for support it's relatively limited it does exist in some cases but relatively limited uh and then yeah we'll get into the characters so mont starting off uh to me is a must-have uh, main tank unit and ex recommended absolutely it's just he's too good uh he's got access to immortal spear which gives him courage he can proc hate via the taunt blade sentinel is great for defense and spear buffs he does have jamming edge which is a physical attack that can uh cancel spell casting so that has some potential use in terms of dps loss for the enemy he does have uh breaks for attack and magic he does have beast and human killer as well and i know some of the types you're not all of them are beasts but maybe like one or two but there are some human characters on these stages where he can definitely increase his damage overall because of that uh, Levael as a unit is actually kind of one dimensional. Uh, she is the only healer, but it's the arithmetician job, so you do have some access to single target and AoE healing. Uh, both magic offensively as well, where obviously there's like AoE magic for the Earth Stone God and unit for the stone so uh disable potential as well on that arithmetician job but that's really it the main job of black mage is really kind of meh there's not a lot on it that doesn't already exist in the rest of her kit in terms of like magic and aoe obviously it comes in a you know 
extra magic that as the battle goes on you have more skills if you run out of skills but overall she is kind of a one trick pony so although i do recommend her as a healer there you know her overall influence might be kind of fair just because she is so limited to what her main job doesn't do and what the arithmetician job does uh, durando is uh, another great unit so one of the the big x unit big time dps access to both slash and strike damage he's very bulky with uh, marauding spirit which is buff to defense agility and attack he's got a 25 defense break which is really critical for chunking down some of these enemies purification so you can dispel ailments on teammates if they get status ailments he does have store which is a good dps increase in return pummel for a double hit for chaining and then he's uh does have a decent amount of short range aoe so it's like one tile next to him so he does have some overall versatility there and what he can do for damage types but he's a definitely a big time dps to keep in mind etra absolutely stunning unit so big time for strike damage she's one of the few obviously durando has access but she's really the big damage dealer for that main job has a ton of utility so chakra heals hp and tp which is actually pretty clutch because these long battles i remember at the end of the last one like running out of tp on the lost boss and like really having trouble so the fact that she can do this at will can be a, a important 25 percent chance to revive a teammate low odds but if you need it because i know some of the conditions in these battles are no ko'd units at the end of it so if she can res a teammate and like bail you out that's great and then purification dispel status elements fist of frenzy is a confusion and berserk potential attack so that's also pretty awesome to inflict on an enemy the cleric sub job can dispel deep officer teammates the knight sub job is great for disable and a whole bunch of different breaks here uh, attack magic and agility break for enemies so overall great 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 unit uh, and then finally she's very light evade potential no abilities that increase it but she does have enough luck that she might be able to dodge an ability here and there lorenzo interesting unit i'm fair on him uh versatile dps because he is very very pierce heavy but he does have a and he's one of the few pierce units murmur has the sub job but she doesn't hit as hard as he does i believe um he does have time mage access on the sub job no quick and only haste so to me you are gonna you know haste is super super valuable and i loved using it in the last one but uh his overall damage types although pierce is really you know unique to this cast i don't think his abilities overall bring that much extra to the table uh, that's that's really all i can say about that uh, murmur stunning fantastic resists overall so her survivability is absolutely immense uh, she's a hybrid unit technically i thought this is kind of interesting where uh she does have semi-equal attack and magic base stats so magic is definitely higher uh but she does have some physical damage attacks in her kit not only on the lancer sub job but on her main kit one of her attacks is physical so i think you technically could build it for hybrid i'd probably build it for magic personally but you got some options uh she does have access to attack magic and agility breaks cura in a pinch if you really need that healing jamming thrust is awesome as we mentioned earlier for canceling had uh, potential magic abilities this ability is the next two are like why she's a must pick defense destroyer decreases enemy defense for 30 and spirit for 38 that's a crazy strong break in addition to that her stonega imperils earth resistance 38 percent so the two of these alone are stunningly large dps increases for the team so definitely definitely you know murmur a must pick mustadio i initially was really excited to use him because he, he doesn't get a ton of use in the game by and large but he is mostly missile damage and i honestly don't know if, if there's enough damage to be done with that considering he doesn't have any external teammate buffs like missile attack up and things that you normally see in the missile comps but he has a deep sub job a uh, quick shot is a triple hit so some chaining potential he does have access to immobilize and disable but so do a couple other characters the ranger does have barrage with some decent aoe Thief sub job can confuse he has steel vision finally he does have steel time access so there actually might be a use for him in some of these you know end game things but the rest of his kit i think is rather lackluster just to make up for that uh, in particular bylo is uh interesting unit so he does have pretty nutty evasion he's in the top 10 in the entire game for that evasion but he's also the slowest character in the game literally his agility stat is tied for the lowest in the game decent defense overall though he is kind of bulky considering he's got the evasion he's limited to slash damage only throughout his entire kit he does have some breaks uh, potential for attack magic and agility hp absorb so he's got some sustainability as well disable access he does have immortal spear which grants some courage tom play to proc hate uh and yeah i mean the thing for him is although he's probably a great sr unit i think in the broad scheme of what you can bring to this battle he is kind of a one-trick pony and if uh, the only reason i'd ever bring him is if you didn't have mon which i think would be kind of weird i think most people would have mon at this point at least if you're caught up in the storyline quests maybe not x but like mon's probably a lot closer than Bailo is and probably is going to get you more benefit overall i'm just speaking 
realistically here. So my personal recommended team, I already spoiled one of them here. Uh, Mott, definite must pick as the main tank. I do like Livial, not even, only just for the healing potential, but for the magic, although Murmur does have some magic access, overall, this cast of characters is relatively lacking for that type, and I would want one source of it in there. Durando is a definite pick for me, just given his uh, potential damage up output. Etra is a definite must pick for all of her utility, the extra strike damage. And then finally, I Murmur is like a must pick for me. So not that the other characters aren't good, they certainly are viable. I don't think there's a single character here that isn't viable. I think to me though, these are the five that give me the best chance of winning, if, if that makes sense. Uh, for the notable vision cards, uh, Dreams of Heroism is absolutely fantastic. It's great for Mont, it gives a magic resistance and agility. And then for the t uh, for unit slash resistance and HP, so it makes him a bulkier tank. For the party, it's AOE resistance, party HP up, and party increased TP, which again, I mentioned earlier, you can run out of by the end of that last battle. So this is an underrated card for that purpose alone. Uh, Solitary Lion, also amazing for Mont. Defense, HP, slash attack. For the party, it gives an increase of earth attack, which is really important offensively. Accuracy and slash resistance penetration as well. So either of these cards, and if you can have both at the same time, don't get me wrong, they're great. It's just both these do really great things. Greetings from afar, don't underrate. It's uh, attack and magic versatile on the stats, although the buff is for magic. But the increased earth attack of 20, if you didn't have Solitary Lion, that's kind of a new card. This one is a decent substitute to get that extra you know, potential damage output. And again, these cards are primarily the ones that have the earth party buffs on it. There's obviously, and I'll get to in a second, a bunch of other vision cards which work as well too. Memories of Apples is almost a must pick for me, definitely if you're running Durando. It gives him defense penetration, increases his defense, and actually give him one move, which I thought was really interesting. Increases crit rate, and for the party, increases acquired AP, which is awesome just to get more of those abilities out, and crit evade, which is going to help you die less by taking less burst damage. Finally, secret orders here. Uh, increase agility for the for the user, decrease spirit trait as a trade-off. For the party, increases slash attack and crit damage, so decent DPS output is there. And, and then, honestly though, these are some cards that are not element locked, but I think are still by far and away some of the best overall cards you can put to around a team. So Clairvoyant Astrologer for both the attack buff and the extra acquired AP. If we're using Lorenzo, we can use the ability on it as well. Death Machine and Odin are great for unit and area resist, which are super versatile in maps like these where you get a bunch of different attack types potentially. Fenrir is amazing for the magic resist because I know a lot of these characters are kind of weak to magic and not that there's a ton of magic on the enemies but it exists so being able to hedge that a little bit with this one vision card is is noteworthy and then my underrated favorite black rose elena although they don't get any real benefits from the dark things up if you put this on livial she actually can use the ability on it which is an aoe resist down and i know one of the conditions for these maps technically is uh defeating like three or more enemies at once so this is a really great card to help not only decrease that AOE resistance, but potentially be the AOE attack that kills multiple enemies. So I, th I think that's probably another mission. I know it typically is, but that's uh, that's in a nutshell. Hopefully this was informative. I know uh, the earth farming is typically on Thursdays for the materials for the double drop rate. So I'm a day late on making this for you guys to get a head start. But either way, it's something to at least start feeling out because it's going to be coming soon. And I just wanted to let you all know about it. So I'll talk to you all uh, later and uh, enjoy the weekend.